This guide is designed to get you through the harsh jungles of Selino Yarsk while you're also playing on extreme or even European extreme difficulties so you can get Foxhound rank. You're also going to learn how to take out each boss non-lethally with multiple strategies for each boss, as well as multiple strategies dependent on whether you're playing a new game or new game plus save file for the hardest portions in the game. Let's get into it. If this is your first time attempting a Foxhound run, or your first time playing on the hardest difficulties, I highly recommend starting a preparation or prep playthrough on Extreme or European Extreme. There are two reasons why I would advise this. The first being, playing on Extreme or Euro Extreme is a massive jump up from even hard difficulty. Enemies have much better vision and hearing, and bosses are much harder to take out. Playing through one of these difficulties before you go for a top rank will help you get used to playing at a higher level. Don't worry too much about kills, continue continues or alerts during this playthrough, just focus on remembering enemy patrol layouts and taking out bosses non-lethally. This of course is so you can earn their respective camouflage and use them during your second playthrough on Extreme or Euro Extreme to make the run much easier. The camo patterns you absolutely want to earn during this prep playthrough are number 1. Ocelot's Animal's Camouflage, which will help stabilize your aim when you're low on stamina. Number 2. The Fierce Spider Camouflage, which gives a massive boost to your camo index at the cost of stamina. Number Number three, the Sorrow Spirit Camo, which completely silences your footsteps and gives back stamina when choking out guards. And number four, the Sneaking Suit, which cuts every single source of damage in half and significantly reduces how fast your stamina drains. There are also the End's Moss Camo, the Fury's Fire Camo, and Colonel Volgan's Cold War Camo that can all be used in certain situations to make Foxhound rank easier during your second playthrough. Not to mention the fact that after completing the game once, you are awarded with the Patriot, an extremely powerful weapon that does not count as a special item, which means you can use it while trying to earn Foxhound rank. Either way, whether you choose to go for a prep run or not, as mentioned during the intro, I will be showing you ways to take on the harder portions of the game, whether you're on New Game or New Game Plus, and have all the camos at your disposal. Without further ado, let's get into our Foxhound playthrough. Now, for the sake of transparency, I do want to mention that I'm on a New Game Plus Extreme save file. So I'm currently playing on extreme difficulty and with all of the camo that I just mentioned at my disposal. And that's simply so I can show strategies both using those camouflage and not using them. So whether you're on new game or new game plus, you'll be able to follow this guide. And as mentioned, whether you're on extreme or European extreme, you will also be able to follow this guide. The last sort of thing that isn't that important, but I should mention it, is that I'm very accustomed to playing the game with this sort of camera. But I realize I'm in the minority. Most people play with the camera that I just switched to, which is the third-person camera or the over-the-shoulder camera. So I will be doing the guide in the in its entirety using the 3D cam just to make it easier on most people. Either way, the beginning of the game is always the same on every difficulty. Just climb up that tree using the action button, shimmy over to your pack or snake's pack, press the action button again to hang from that branch, and retrieve your pack. Once you've done that, we can continue on to the Swampland area. Swampland area isn't going to have any real enemies at all, other than crocodiles. And all we have to do when it comes to those crocodiles is roll over them. The other thing I should mention about rolling is it doesn't really save time unless it's over hilly terrain, as you just saw there. You can just run over this first croc's face so he doesn't tail whip you. Roll over to this one, then roll over him, and then roll here, just to not have to be slowed down by that quicksand, and then you can roll a couple times up here. As I mentioned, rolling up hills is really the only time that you want to roll. And now next up, we have Dremuch North, which is the first map with a few enemies that we need to take out. We're going to do it the slow but consistent way, which is just get close to them, as close as we can, and then headshot them. So about here, and then you want to headshot this first guy. No reason to rush. Trust me, we have plenty of time. We have five hours to beat. MGS3 to get Foxhound, and that's plenty. I would move up a little bit before your next shot on this guy, just to ensure that you get the shot without missing. And then this last guy, technically, we don't have to tranquilize, but just to make it super safe, we can do that same thing. Walk up to him, and then tranquilize him before rolling up to this next area here. And once you're here, we're not going to get fancy at all. We're going to do what the game wants us to do, which is shoot this hornet's nest directly in front of us. That's going to fall on this first guard here cause the hornets to attack him and then he's going to cross the bridge now make sure you stay kind of far back here because these guards can see you from pretty far away wait till they turn around but now we can cross the bridge and they're also going to take out that fourth and last guard there 
So by taking out that hornet's nest, it's a little bit slower than doing it the speed run or quick way, but it's not going to matter. I promise you guys that if you follow this guide, you will have plenty of time to get foxhound rating or ranking. Either way, in Razvet, all we have to do is the same thing, tranquilize quite a few guards. There's a trick here where right after this cutscene ends, if you hold square, it'll lock onto this first guy automatically, then hold R1, and then you can just aim your gun at him and tranquilize him super easily. Same thing here. We're going to roll, and we're going to hold square to get the lock on going. And then we're going to shoot this guy here. And this guy here. Don't worry if you called in. Not a big deal at all. Then we're going to run over this way. We're going to wait for this guy to turn around once you've ensured that he's turned around. Walk. Don't roll. But walk up this like I just did there. And then see if you see this guy. And then you just want to go in here where we meet Sokolov. And it'll trigger the next cutscene. And once you've regained control of Snake, all we're going to do is try to avoid the bodies on the ground. We're making our way back to where we just were, that bridge area. Should have also mentioned earlier, but I'm not going to be saving at any point during the Virtuous mission, the first chapter of the game. I'll show you guys where we're going to save for the first time. There's no real need to save during any of these portions. Once you're here, though, the game's going to show you the cure menu tutorial. You want to do a suture kit, bandage, septic, disinfectant, disinfectant, septic, bandage, suture kit. One more suture kit, bandage, septic, disinfectant. And now we have a broken bone, so that's a bandage and a splint. Back to the cut now, which is suture kit, bandage, septic, disinfectant, and then the splint and the bandage. So as I mentioned, I'm not going to save here. We didn't save here at all. Make sure you don't save here. Do not save here. I promise you guys, skipping that save is going to be clutch. It's going to save you time later on, so you don't have to watch these cutscenes and codec calls every single time. So keep moving forward here. Not really much to do here other than just traverse to the next map, which is over this way. Now this map is where we're going to meet up with the boss and she's going to strip of us all our weapons and all that. And this is the first sort of map where it's going to be super advantageous if you do, if you are playing on a new game plus, if you played through that prep uh, save file that I mentioned earlier. But no worries if you didn't. I will show you the two different, or three different methods actually to get through this portion of the game. Now make sure you save here. This is going to be our, our first save file regardless of if you're new game or new game plus. Make sure you do save here. And once you're back in the game, this is going to be for New Game Plus. This is the strategy for New Game Plus. You're going to run toward this tree, and you're going to roll once while equipping your stun grenades. So roll, get your stun grenades going, and then let this guy see you. As soon as he sees you, open up the camouflage menu, change your face paint to brown, and change your uniform to spider. So the fears camouflage that you earned. Once you've done those two things, you can press the options button to close the menu. Walk forward, then walk this way. You want to cook a grenade here, so you can walk behind this guy without being detected. And then you can close it once it's here. And then roll up these hills here. This is very important. You have to roll here to make it in time to the next map here. Now, the strategy for the New Game playthrough, or if you just want to be super safe, you can also do this if you're playing New Game Plus, is literally, as soon as you spawn in and take control of Snake, just leave to this area behind you here. And what that does is actually resets the guards that are roaming and wandering, the one, the two that are walking toward you as soon as you spawn in with Snake. Once you've left to the Swampland, all you have to do is immediately go back into Dremuch North, and you'll notice that the guards are actually not walking or jogging toward you anymore. They're actually kind of reset, I guess you could say, to their normal position, so you can see one off in the distance there. Now what you want to do is equip the stun grenades, and you're going to use those again to mask your footsteps. And what you want to do is actually sneak up on this guy. Once you're right behind him, you can slam him. So unequip your grenades and slam him. Same thing with this guy here. If you want to be super safe, walk up to him while cooking a grenade. Unequip the grenade and then slam him. And then from here, 
All you want to do is continue the normal route up this hill. No one should see you here. To the next map. Now, once you're in this next map, immediately open up your camouflage menu and switch your uniform to Flectarn. And what you're going to do is you're immediately going to run into this patch of grass and then crouch. That guy's going to look, as you can see at the top of your screen. Once he looks away, we're going to stand up. Let this other guy see us on purpose. He's going to say, who was that? Once they're near each other, you can roll over this way, around these trees, and then over to the bridge, and then across it. If you did it correctly, no one will see you, I promise. And once you're here, you're free to just walk forward into Razvet. Once you're in Razvet, nothing much to do here. We do have to collect a super important item, one of the best items in the entire game, which is the cardboard box, of course. And that is located up here. And over this way, you want to roll up here. And the box is up there, as you can see. I would approach it at this angle so you don't fall off. And then use the D-pad to walk into the box and roll off of it. Now, there's actually two items I lied. The other item that you want to pick up, we're only going to use... Maybe once, maybe twice, and those are the thermal goggles. Mostly for the end is why I picked those up. And once you pick those two things up, you can walk through the door again to trigger the cutscene where you meet Eva, and she gives you your equipment. Once you've skipped all these cutscenes, the game is going to ask you to save. Press no. We're actually going to save as soon as we initiate the Ocelot unit boss fight. So as soon as this starts, you can save here now. And I would recommend saving here. This is going to be our second save file. Good luck. I'm going to be showing you two different ways to take on the Ocelot unit. The first is going to be my way, my preferred way of doing it. And I'm going to slow down the footage just a little bit so you can see what's going on accurately. The first thing you want to do, either way that you do it, is open up your menu. And I like to change to Desert Tiger since we're going to be using the Mark 22 and I don't want the suppressor to wear. Also make sure that you do have the brown face paint. We're going to be using that in the map after this. Once you have that, the most important thing, however, is to go into your backpack. You want to unequip your survival knife. Equip the Mark 22 and then unequip the directional mic. Then go over to your actual items and equip the cardboard box. Once you've done that and you are ready to go, unpause the game. And then you want to turn Snake around slightly. You're going to equip your Mark 22 and you're going to shoot this first guy. Make sure you don't headshot him. Shoot him somewhere in the torso. Then you're going to go around the bed. Make sure you don't go on top of it or you'll cause an alert right away. And you want to tuck yourself over in this corner here against this wall. And if you're playing with the 3D cam, you can turn your camera to see the Ocelot unit sneaking up on you. Once they've stopped, you can knock on the wall once, just to keep them in place for a second. Walk away from the wall and equip your stun grenade, and throw the stun grenade right at the edge of the doorway here. It's going to land right in front of them, so make sure you turn around so you don't get flashed yourself. They're going to be blinded, so you're not going to cause an alert. Roll into them, and that's going to knock out the ones that didn't get knocked out by the initial flash of the stun grenade. Then walk to the doorway and use the lean by pressing R1 and holding R2 while you're aiming to take out the guy on the roof there. Then you want to position yourself up against these boxes here and stand on your tiptoes by holding R1 and also L2 and R2 while you're aiming to get a little more elevation. That's going to help you take that guy out. The first guy that we shot by the bed should pass out around that time. And then you'll see that there's a guy patrolling around looking at the origin of where that stun grenade went off. We want to lure him into the room with us by knocking three times as I did there. And then equip your box and wait for him to show up at the doorway here. Once he's in the same room as us, you're going to do this technique with the box where you run into them. That's going to unequip your box for you automatically and give you a second to CQC them. So as you can see, I'm going to walk into him. The game's going to unequip the box for me and I'm going to use that split second to CQC slam him to the ground. Once he's out, you want to flip over that piece of the wall there and then walk on top of this piece of the wall and use this little cutout in the brick wall here in front of you to kind of get the angle on this guy that's way down there by the edge, by the edge of the map. You can actually get the angle on him and headshot him. Even if you don't headshot him, it's okay. Just make sure to get a couple shots on him so he passes out. Once he's out, you want to walk off of this. Then this is very important. You want to walk around this tree in the back here up against this fence or else this last guy that we need to shoot is going to see us. But as long as you have your back pretty much up against that fence behind us, you should be okay. And just line up the shot. 
and take him out. And that is the last Ocelot unit member that you have to take out. Now, that was my preferred method of doing it. It's a little difficult to do. But for that reason, I will be showing you a second way, which is a little bit slower. But it's still pretty consistent and still pretty fast. Now, the second method of doing this is going to start the same exact way. We're going to do our menuing. So unequip and equip the weapons you need and don't need, as well as the cardboard box. Same thing here. You're going to turn around, shoot this guy once. But now you're going to turn around and press the action button, and that's going to open up this crawl space. Once you're in it, you're going to shift your view over to the right, try to aim around where I am here, and then shoot that guy in the head as soon as he walks by. If you shoot him somewhere else and you miss his head, it's okay. He's just going to take a little bit longer to pass out. Then you want to crawl over to this opening here. Try not to get super close to it, just enough to where you can shoot this guy in the distance here. Headshot him if you can. Once he's out, crawl over to the right here, and you're going to see four of the Ocelot unit standing here, waiting for you in this crawl space. So we're not actually going to crawl out to them, obviously. We're going to throw a stun grenade. Try to aim it a little lower than I did here. As you can see, I aimed it too high, and it didn't go outside. We want it to go outside, because that's going to guarantee that they all get taken out. But now I can show you if there is one or even two remaining that weren't stunned. What you can do is just shoot them with your Mark 22 once or twice. It's going to take a little bit longer for them to pass out, obviously. But that's fine. Now, the most important thing here is when you crawl out, be careful not to run out too far. Because as you can see, the guy on the roof is trying to find out where the origins of that stun grenade going off came from. So just be very careful when you come out of that vent. Once you do, though, come over to the spot here that we used before, this little carved out area from the brick wall that you can kind of get the angle on this guy same thing we did on the first technique and then you can use your leaning technique to get this last guy here or go around the tree as i showed you in the first example but that is the two different ways that you can use to get past the ocelot unit now a massive congratulations for taking on the ocelot unit once again make sure that you have your brown face paint we're going to be using that in the next map and if you did not pick up the thermal goggles you forgot to pick them up you have one more chance to pick them up here in this locker. Once you do, feel free to move on to the next map. Make sure you have your box equipped. We're going to be using that a lot from now on. The reason why I keep reiterating to make sure that you have the brown face paint on is because it actually gives you infinite oxygen while you're swimming. So you'll see in just a second here, as we start swimming, the stamina meter, which is found below your health meter, as you can see, the blue indicates oxygen. And as you can also see, it's not moving at all, which means that we have infinite oxygen. Now, make sure you swim over to the left here, to the northwest part of the map under these fallen logs, these sunken logs. And now, this is very important. You want to make sure that you pick up these grenades here, as well as the ammo for your Mark 22. And if you heard that kissing noise, that means that we have some leeches attached to us, so you can take those off with the cigar in the cure menu. Take them both off, and now we're going to get greeted with a codec call here. Once you've skipped that, you can equip your box to give yourself a little speed boost up hills while you make your way over this way. So as soon as you load into Bolshaya Pass South, the first thing you want to do is save. This is going to be our third save here. And as soon as you've done that, you want to be careful not to get too close to this electrified fence. Just go prone while you're still clear of it. Crawl through this little opening here. And then make sure you're well clear of it before standing up again. The next thing is you want to open up your backpack and equip your thermal goggles if you haven't yet. There are claymores here right in front of us. If you know where they are, you can skip this step. Otherwise, equip your thermals and you can see there's one claymore to my right and one kind of hidden in the bushes here to my left. Just walk in between them carefully. Once you're here, you can equip your box again. And what I like to do here is actually take out these dogs with the tranquilizer. The one here. Wait till the other one goes and checks on the other dog. And then take that one out. Then climb up this tree using the action button. And then once you reach the top, you're just going to shimmy a couple of steps. And then you can drop down using the X button. Before making your way up this side of the map here out to the left. Now this next portion, there's a lot of different ways to do this. I'm going to show you guys the safest way, in my opinion, to do it which is just shooting all these guys with the trank in the torso area. So one there, one there, and then you're going to get this third guy kind of off in the distance there. One there. You're just going to wait for them to all pass out. Now, if any of them go and try to help the their fallen comrades while they're passed out, so for example, this second guy here is going to go try to help him, just shoot him again. 
Try to get a headshot off if you can. And then once you've done that, and you've heard the third guy, he just passed out there, you can dive through this. And then try to take out this dog from here if you can. He might be wandering somewhere differently in your game. This guy up here is going to catch you or see you probably if you've timed it similarly to mine. But then he's going to get distracted by his fallen comrades over there. If you want to be super safe, you can take that guy out too. Just keep crawling here till you're past him. Once you're past him, you can make your way to the next map here. Which is Bolshaya Past Base. Now this map is going to be very easy. We're just going to ignore this first guy here. Just walk past him. No need to waste any ammo on him. And we're going to be taking out this guy in the distance. You can shoot him. You can CQC him. I'll probably end up CQCing him here. And then right after that, you can switch to your lethal gun. And you can shoot both of these barrels here. Now, shooting barrels and making guards die that way doesn't count as kills in this game. So just keep that in mind. We're going to be using that later as well. Now, if you're on New Game Plus, this is for New Game Plus players only. Switch to your sneaking suit here for the Ocelot fight. This sneaking suit makes it so you take half damage from every single source. So every time Ocelot shoots you, it only does half the damage that it normally would, which is massive. Once you've done that, though, continue on to the Ocelot fight. Now, the very first thing you want to do during the Ocelot fight is hold on to R2 and hover over your Mark 22 and then unequip the suppressor by hovering over the gun and pressing X. Once you've done that, though, and you're ready to go, let go of R2 and then press square immediately to fire off one round. Once you've done that, you can hold L1 to scoot back while still aiming. And once you are made sure that you've scooted back just a little bit so you don't fall while throwing grenades, equip a stun grenade and throw one at Ocelot. Then equip your Mark 22 and turn around. Once it goes off, you can turn back around and shoot one round off at Ocelot before doing the same thing again, throwing a stun grenade toward him, equipping your Mark 22, and then turning around. And once you've done this second shot, you want to quickly equip your lethal gun and then shoot at this animal here. That's going to cause Ocelot to get upset and turn around, and that's going to give you the chance to get a free shot off. Once you shoot him once, go over this way to pick up some ammo. And now we're just going to wait for Ocelot to get his next shot off, and then he's going to taunt you here. As soon as he taunts you, you can get an extra shot off here. Move out of the way so he doesn't shoot you. Shoot him if you can. And then once they say Major Forgive Me, you can get another free shot off on him. And what I like to do here is actually shoot with your lethal gun the bees up here. That's going to cause you to have another free shot on Ocelot. If you can get the angle on him as I am here. And that's going to finish the fight. You should also be seeing a YouTube short that goes over the basics of the fight as well. But either way, congratulations. Now, through the power of editing, I'm going to make this cave way brighter than it probably is on your screen. By the way, if you're on a new game and not new game plus, the animal's camouflage will be found here. You definitely want to pick that up. Either way, the cave should be a bit brighter for all of you in this video just to make it easier to follow the guide. From where you spawn, you want to go right and then make your way to this hidden little crawl space here. And by the way, you do want to keep, if you're on New Game Plus, you do want to keep your sneaking suit on. Because it's going to help mitigate some damage from the pain as well. So for both of these boss fights, back to back, you want to just keep your sneaking suit on. Make your way all the way to the end of this little crawl space or tunnel here. And then start walking again. Make sure your box is equipped so you can run up this area a little easier. Now make sure you do not miss this extra Mark 22 ammo here. There should be two cases of it. You want to start off the pain fight with as much ammo as you possibly can have. Before making your way into next map here. Now there's going to be a bit more ammo toward the end here. Right before we get to where we fight the pain. So make sure you pick that up as well. And then there's another crucial item, which are the smoke grenades that you absolutely want to pick up here. As you can see, we just picked up some ammo for our lethal gun. And now before we initiate the cutscene for the pain fight, you want to make sure you go into your backpack. And then equip the Patriot, if you're on New Game Plus, the grenade, and the smoke grenade. And once again, make sure that everything else is equipped and that if you're on New Game Plus... Make sure that if you have the sneaking suit, you have it equipped. This is going to help you a lot. 
For the pain fight, I'm going to be showing you guys two different ways, whether you're on New Game or New Game Plus. So let's start and do the New Game Plus strategy first. So for New Game Plus, you want to abuse the hell out of the Patriot. The way that you're going to do that is right as soon as the fight starts, equip the Patriot and just lay into the pain. That's going to stop him from throwing his pheromones for the Hornets. And then once you stop him, you can just try to headshot him, focus on getting headshots off on him. Once he covers himself with his Hornets, equip a grenade or a smoke grenade. And then you're just going to stand in the same spot here, hold square to do a tough throw or a hard throw. And that should line up perfectly with where he is. And then same thing, you just want to aim at his head over and over again as much as you can until you get to phase two. Now the beginning of phase two is super important. Equip a grenade right away and then throw it right away and then go into first person view by aiming your gun. So make sure that you're in first person view when he throws those hornets or else those hornets are going to knock you down and you're not going to have a good time, trust me. There's actually a sort of like glitch or bug that happens in the HD collection or master collection because the game runs at 60 frames per second. If you are in first person view while those hornets go off, you actually won't get hit by them. So that is my preferred method of doing it if you have the Patriot at your disposal. Now the way we're going to do it for a new game is by trying to emulate the same thing that we did with the Patriot. But since we don't have the Patriot on a new game, we're just going to use our lethal handgun. And what you want to do, the first thing is make sure you have your lethal handgun equipped, of course, and make sure that it is not suppressed. We don't want to wear out the suppressor for no reason. Once you've made sure of those things, you're going to do the same thing as in the last strategy. Just make sure to lay into the pain as soon as you can, as soon as you gain control of Snake, like this. That's going to stop him from throwing his pheromones the same way as the last strat, and then you just want to go for headshots. Now, I should mention, if you're not able to do this super clean, when he throws a grenade at you, you can actually go in the water and press triangle to bring yourself back up, and that'll make you immune to grenades. For the pheromones, you can do the same thing. Just go in the water for a second, try to get away from like the little puffs of smoke or whatever they are. You can also go underwater to avoid the hornets. Since I know not everybody's going to be able to do the strat right off the bat, those are some ways you can avoid most of his attacks. When he does this, all that is is just kind of obscuring your view. As you can see in first person view, I can't really see that well. Once you've taken the paint out, congratulations. If you don't have his camouflage, you can find it on this little platform here. So if you're on a new game and you want the Hornet camo, make sure you go to that little island via this trail here. You can walk up this trail and then flip over to this little island where the paint was standing. Otherwise, if you already have it because you're on New Game Plus, we can continue on. Now, as you can see, we're running a little low on ammo, but don't fret. We have plenty of places to pick up ammo coming up here. For this area, you just want to make sure that you have your box equipped so we can walk through this hilly sort of tunnel here without too much resistance. Once you get to around here, you can flip or dive into the cutscene. Make sure you skip that. And then I would equip your lethal gun or the Patriot if you have it. So if you don't have the Patriot, equip this gun. Make sure you take the silencer off. Make sure you have your box on to traverse through this a little faster. And then there's a little cave to our left that's going to have a ton of ammo we can pick up. So make sure you pick that up. As you can see, it's right here. Now, be careful. There are claymores here. There's two claymores, one here and one here. Once you've taken those both out, you can pick up this ammo here. And now we're looking pretty good on our ammo. We have 22 out of 22 rounds for our lethal gun and 22 out of 25 rounds for our non-lethal gun. Once you've picked those up, you can equip the box and make your way up this area here. Unequip the box once you get to the top, and then flip or roll down this way. And now before you go into this next area, to be super safe, I would equip a better camouflage for being underwater. If you have the snake camouflage, that's perfect. Otherwise, you can use pretty like tiger stripe will work fine, or raindrop if you have it. I'm just going to go with the snake for now. And you don't necessarily need to do this. This is just to be super safe. Make sure that you do have brown face paint still on, though, because we are going to be swimming here in just a second. Once you're here, just go prone and then press forward to start swimming. And as you can see, our brown face paint makes it so we don't ever have to resurface. I like to stick to the right edge here. I don't know if that matters, but... I never get caught by doing that. And we also, since we have the snake camouflage, for those of you guys who have the snake camouflages like I do, we're all the way to 34% camouflage, so there shouldn't be any way that we get caught here. 
I think anything above 10% camo index at this point um, will help you avoid getting caught here. I like to wait for this next light here to go away and then continue forward. Now, this next area is going to be very important. So we're actually going to save once we get into it. Make sure that you re-equip the suppressors for both of your weapon. And you want to start off with your Mark 22 equipped before you go into this next map here. You're going to have one cutscene to skip. And then immediately we're going to tranquilize the guard right in front of us. So right here, we're going to tranquilize him first. Try to get a headshot off on him. And now what we're going to do is actually switch to our lethal pistol. And we're going to shoot at these barrels here. And the next set here. And that's going to do a little bit of damage to the end. And while it doesn't show it on this screen, it actually does a little bit of stamina damage as well. So when we start the end fight, once we get there, he'll be both weak in terms of HP and weak in terms of stamina. And then the other barrels we blew up, so there's no reinforcements. We took out every single guard here without them being able to call in reinforcements. So we can hang out here, pick up some more ammo, pick up stun grenades, as well as these smoke grenades. Now, everything that I just picked up there is super important, especially these smoke grenades if you don't have the maximum amount and those stun grenades that were on this boat. Once you have all of that and you're topped off for ammo, you could have saved at the beginning there. I don't usually like to, but you could have saved there. Either way, we're definitely going to save as soon as we go into this next area here, the warehouse. So as soon as you spawn in, make sure you save here. Do you want to save? Chin up. And once you're done saving, what we're going to do is with our lethal gun still equipped from the last portion that we did there, the docks, you're going to roll up the stairs and then you're going to hit this corner and roll off of it. And you're very quickly going to shoot that barrel before that guy is able to turn around. And then just equip your box and go up the stairs like this. And then you can just see you see this guy once you get to the top. He's the guy at HQ is in a call and reinforcements, but you're going to be long gone before you get to the Granini Gorky South portion. Now here there's no enemies, so you can kind of breathe easy. Just make sure you avoid the traps and make sure you have your box equipped. It is a bit hilly here. I'm just going to go straight down the middle here. There is a booby trap here, but if you have your box on and you stay to the left, you should be able to avoid it. And we're going to make our way into the next area here. Now, there's going to be one enemy. Make sure you switch to your non-lethal gun. That's very important. There's going to be one enemy that we can tranquilize here. Once you get to this tree here, you can just line up your shot, take him out, and then take out the dog next to him. We're making your way all the way over here to this part of the electrified fence. And we're just going to crawl under it. Make sure you don't get too close so you don't get electrified. Once you're well clear of it, once again, stand up just to make sure that you don't get electrified. And then you're going to enter Granini Gorky, the interior walls through this little opening here. And once we're in the inside walls, there's going to be one enemy to our left that you can immediately see already. We're going to take him out very quickly with a headshot. Boom. And then we're going to walk, and once you hit this second tire here, you're just going to stay here, and you're going to headshot this guy way down there. Take him out. This guy might see you, but it's okay. Just go around the wall. And then make your way inside the lab. Now, once you're in the lab, just to make it super easy, what I like to do is go to your camouflage, start with the face, and make sure you have no paint, so no camouflage equipped. And then go to uniform, and make sure that you go all the way down here to the scientist outfit. And that makes it so you can't equip any weapons or anything. But as you can see, I can walk in front of this guard here. And it's like I'm one of the scientists that work here. As long as you don't roll or anything or do anything like that, anything suspicious in front of them, they'll just think that you're another scientist working, going about his day. Once you've reached this bottom area of the lab here, there's going to be one crucial item that we need to pick up that's going to be super helpful, most especially for the end fight that's coming up on us very soon. It's found in here, and that is the SIG gas spray. So make sure you pick that up and equip it. And then walk out the door. Make sure you have it equipped. And then as soon as you walk in, there's going to be one guard. Take him out with the spray that you just picked up. And then you're going to walk over to this guy and take him out with the spray that you just equipped. Walk over to this locker here and open it with the action button and then pick up the handkerchief. Now you want to equip that as well. And you might want to equip some of the stuff that we don't need. So you can unequip the Patriot for now. Or actually leave the Patriot on. You can unequip the cigar gas spray until later. You can also unequip these grenades. We're not going to be using them for a while. And then everything else you can leave on. 
Now, this is the part that's going to be very important. You want to equip the handkerchief now. And you want to equip the box. And you want to walk into this room with the box on. And as soon as you reach this guy, you're going to run into him and then use the handkerchief to make him pass out. The box makes it so the other scientists don't get suspicious of you. Otherwise, they're the only enemies in the game that get kind of suspicious of Snake in his hey. scientist outfit. Skip all these cutscenes here. And now the same thing. This is going to be kind of hard to do. But I promise it's worth it. Use the cardboard box again. There's going to be that same enemy here. Walk into him. Do that. And then do that to this guy. And you're good to go. Now equip the box again. Pick up this suppressor for your Mark 22. And as you can see, I can walk with around these scientists with the box on all day. The only people that get suspicious of the box are actually the guards. But you can just bypass all the guards by running past them here. Same thing here. That little box technique where you run into them and then it gives you a split second to do whatever you want. You can even see, see them if you want. And that is crucial to learn during this run. So it might take a couple of tries, but you definitely want to practice that technique as this is not the last time that we'll be using it. Once you're up here, you can take these guys out just to make it a little bit easier on yourself. The most important part here is, again, not to do anything suspicious, like bumping into them or anything. And you can just exit the same way that we came in. Once you leave the lab area, we do want to switch our items around. The first thing you want to do is unequip the handkerchief and re-equip your SIG gas spray. And then you want to go into your camouflage, change your face camo to splitter. And then now everybody should have the animal's camouflage because we all took out Ocelot non-lethally at one point. So make sure you equip that because we're running a little bit low on stamina and our aim is going to be all over the place. Once you do that, equip your Mark 22 tranquilizer gun. Tranquilize this first guy, then tranquilize the second guy over here. What's wrong? Now he might catch you. Make sure you go prone if he decides to walk over to his friend over here. I would go around these trees just to be super safe. Now what you want to do is tranquilize the guy that's going to appear in the corner here in just a second. Once he's out, be very careful here. There's going to be one more guy to tranquilize. Take him out. And then crawl through the same little vent here that we used to get in. There's going to be one more guy we have to tranquilize. I like to run all the way back toward the edge of the map here. And then turn around to take him out just to give you ample time to tranquilize him. Take out the dog as well. And then make sure you crawl under this electrified fence without getting caught by it. Then run over this way. Now there's going to be some guys that can see you potentially here. Be very careful. Tuck yourself into this wall here. And then make your way out to where we fight the fear. Now I'm going to show you guys two different ways to take out the fear. The one, the first one is going to be if you have the Patriot. But let's do that first. First method, you must make sure that you have the Patriot equipped before you start the fight. If you do and you've checked, make then you want to go over to your fake death pill. Use it by holding L2 and then pressing X while hovering over it. That's going to cause the fear to come down and check on you. You can rotate and check on him using the right stick to rotate the camera. We want to wait till he turns around in just a second here. Once he turns around, you can then use the revival pill. And then take a couple steps forward so you don't hit him or run into him. Once you do, equip the stun grenade and throw it somewhere near him on the ground. Make sure you turn around so you don't get flashed. Once he gets hit by it and he says, my eyes, equip the Patriot, turn back around, and then spray at the fear. And that's going to take him out non-lethally. Even if we used a lethal gun, it's going to count as a non-lethal kill. Now that is the first method, and you have to have a new game plus with the Patriot to do that. Now the strategy that you can use that doesn't involve any weapons at all, that you can use whether you're on new game or new game plus, and this is the way that I usually do it in my playthroughs, is by actually immediately as soon as the fight starts, coming over here, rolling up this small little hill, and then positioning yourself around here before taking the fake death pill. And we're actually going to be using these traps here that are already set for us to take out the fear the same way as we did with the Patriot. And that is by throwing a stun grenade and then tripping those traps. Those traps are then going to hit him. As you can see, the same thing. He turns around, use a revival pill, throw a stun grenade near him, then make your way over to this trap. Wait a second and then set the trap off. And as you can see, his stamina is being drained by his own trap. Very easy. It doesn't take any weapons. You don't need to have any special weapons or anything. You can do this with 
No weapons at all, as you saw there, other than the stun grenade. And it takes him out super quickly and super easily. So once you've taken on the fear and beat him, congratulations. The next thing you want to do is go into the cure menu and use the serum to cure yourself of the poison that he hit you with. And then you don't have to worry about taking out the arrow in your knee. You can if you want to, but I don't bother with it because it heals on its own later. Make sure you go left here. Clear of these traps, equip your box to traverse a little bit faster, and then make sure that you have your Mark 22 equipped for this next warehouse area. Now, I would save here at this warehouse. As soon as you're back in the warehouse, make sure you save. And once you do, there's going to be three guys that we need to take out pretty quickly here. So make sure that you have your Mark 22 equipped. If you do, run to the edge of this guard railing here. You want to shoot this guy first. Don't worry about headshotting him. Just shoot him once. Make sure you stab on your tiptoes so you can headshot this guy. And then headshot that guy down there. If you don't headshot, those two guys are going to catch you. They're going to spot you. So be very careful. Then make your way down these stairs very slowly. Once you're here, you can jump down. And then sneak up on this guy. CQC slam him. And that's all the guys that you need to worry about here. So just make your way up these stairs using the box if you want to. And in here... Or exiting out to this area. Now once you're here, you can roll once because you're going to get hit with a codec call. Once you skip that codec call, up ahead is where the strategy is going to differ a little bit. Now if you're not on New Game Plus, if this is a new game for you on Extreme, what you want to do is use your lethal gun and then take out this rabbit here. And that's going to be one of very few meals that we eat during this playthrough. So go to food, and you want to eat that rabbit. It's going to give you a lot of stamina back. We just don't want to be low stamina when we go to the end fight, just in case you do get shot. Now, if you are on New Game Plus, if this is New Game Plus and you have the spirit camouflage, you want to equip that for this next portion here. Because we can use that instead of eating to get some stamina back, and I'll show you how to do that in just a second. Either way, just continue on. Now, in this next map here, you want to take this route to the left. Careful not to fall in that pit. And be careful here, if you do not have the spirit camouflage, make sure you equip the box to sneak up on this guy. As I'm doing here. And if you have spirit camo, you can actually choke this guy out, and it's going to give you stamina back. Now make sure you have your non-lethal Mark 22 equipped and you want to take this guy out. Regardless of if you have spirit camo or not, your your footsteps will not be silenced here. So be careful. Equip your box again and make your way this way. To the left here in this opening, there's going to be another guy you can choke out. Now again, if you do not have spirit camo on, be careful because they, they will hear your footsteps. So you have to approach them with the box as I'm about to do here with this guy. Use the box. That little technique that I've showed you guys a few times now. And then now over here is where we want to fight, where the, the end fight is going to start. So make sure you have everything ready. The things that you want are the SIG gas spray. Make sure you have that equipped. That is super important. Same with the stun grenade and the smoke grenade. Both of these items are super important. And then as, as far as camouflage goes, you can really use any one that you want. I'm going to use the spirit camo here. Because it silences my footsteps and it makes it easier to sneak up on him. But I will be showing you a way to sneak up on him regardless of if you have spirit camo. Either way, once you've made sure everything's ready to go, enter the next map here. Now as soon as you load into where the end boss fight arena takes place, you want to save the game. This is very important. Once you're done saving, just follow the path that I take here to avoid the end's shots. Around this tree that you can climb here. We're not going to climb it though. Instead, we're going to head into this building that you can see right here in the distance. Equip your box if you want to go up this little ramp faster. We're just going to stock up on ammo here. And we're also going to waste a little bit of time. Because the more time that passes during this fight, the more stamina is slowly being drained from the end. By the way, if you didn't eat the last rabbit that I showed you, make sure you eat that one there. Before making your way in here. Saving at the beginning where I showed you is very important because, again, it might take you a couple tries to do this. And if you save there, the end is always going to be found in this spot that we're heading to right now. So if you mess up and you have to reload, it's not a big deal. 
because all you have to do is traverse to where we're going now. And he's always going to be found in that same spot. So make your way up here. There's going to be two branching paths here. Just stay to the left. And this next map that we're going into right now is where the end is going to be found. There's two patches of grass. One to the left, one to the right. He's laying down in the right side. Now here's the thing. If you have spirit camo as I do now, you can sneak up on the end very easily. As you can see, he's right here. He doesn't hear our footsteps because of spirit camo. But if you do not have spirit camo, I can show you here just to prove it to you. I'll throw on Tiger Stripe as an example. And you can kind of emulate what Spirit Camo does by throwing on a grenade, cooking it, and then walking with it. We did this at the beginning of the game, if you remember. But this also works. You can sneak up on the end by doing this. Either way, make sure that you approach him at one of his sides here, at his flank. Once you're here, you can crouch, put your grenade away. And then what we're going to do is we're going to loop him with the Sig Gas Spray and Stun Grenades and Smoke Grenades. So you're going to hit him once with this. You're going to switch to your stun, and you're going to make sure that the stun grenade, when you throw it, hits him like that, so he recoils. Then you're going to look up at the sky, look back down, and then hit him with the next one. Do it again, stun grenade. Make sure that it hits him. Look up at the sky. Look back down. Hit him again. And now this time, we're going to use a smoke grenade, and it's going to be a little different. We're going to make sure that we still hit him with the smoke grenade. And then we're going to look down. We're going to let it go off. We're going to let him cough once. And then hit him with it. And then hit him with it again. And then we're going to run over this way to make sure he doesn't go this way. We want him to go the other way, the way that he's going now. This is very important. After you hit him with those two puffs of the Sig Gas Spray before he leaves, make sure you come over here to block his path. Sometimes he will go here regardless of if you're standing here. If he does that, just hit him with a spray, and then he'll go to the path that we want him to go to, which is this way. And once he's here, he has three different spots that he could be in. So this is very important. You don't want to just rush in there, especially if you don't have... The he's, he's right in front of us. As you can see here, we got lucky. He's actually right in front of us there. So we want to use the D-pad to sneak up on him. Now, there's other times where he's right around this corner here, like where the arrow is that you're seeing on screen. He could be aiming at you and ready to fire at you. So you want to sneak up on him about here and then lean to shoot at him before he can shoot at you. Now, if he's in that spot, you got super unlucky. So you're just going to have to get three shots off on him and then do what we're about to do here. So if you got really lucky and he's here, he could also be in this next patch of grass over here. But if he's here, you can sneak up on him with the D-pad or the spirit camo if you have spirit camo. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to hit him once, twice. He's going to flip over and then immediately you're going to run over here. This is the next path that he's going to take. And you want to start puffing the cigar gas spray at him to stop him. And that's going to stop the fight if you do it right. Now, that is very difficult to do, and I realize that. So if you just want to do the cheese method of saving the game and then messing with your console or your platform's internal clock, you are well within your rights to do that. That will not affect the Foxhound rank at all. Either way, however you t decided to take out the end, make sure you do not leave this area without picking up his Mosin, the sniper rifle, the non-lethal sniper rifle that you get from him. That is very important. That is crucial that you pick this up because that is the best weapon bar none for the Fury fight, which is the next fight that we're heading to now. Either way, congratulations on taking out the end. That is not an easy boss fight. Unless you cheese it, of course. But either way, make your way into this tunnel here. And whether you cheesed the end boss fight or not, I would hold on to your save. I wouldn't save right after you load in post end fight. Wait till you're all the way up the iconic ladder scene and make your way into the mountain base area before you save. That's gonna be our next save. All right, once you made it to the top, just exit out this way here. And once you reach the mountain base and load it in, this is where our next save is going to be. So make sure you save here. Okay, and once luck. you've saved, what I would recommend, highly recommend, is choosing one of two camouflages. So I would either go with the Desert Tiger, if you're good on stamina, and you want to make sure that you have enough suppressor left for the rest of the game. 
Or, if you're lower on stamina and you're not too worried about your suppressor, put on the animal's camouflage. Both of these camouflages in this area give you phenomenal camo index, so it doesn't really matter. It's up to you. So throw one of those on, and then we're going to continue forward here. Make sure that you have your Mark 22 suppressed and ready to go. I would equip your box here just to go up this hill a little faster. And then we're not going to get fancy here. All we're going to do is we're going to just take out all of these guards here. This is kind of a tough shot, but take him out if you can. There's going to be a guard right in front of us here, so be very careful. He's going to poke his head out. This guy's going to see us first, actually, but since we have... Desert Tiger or Animals Camo. We have tremendous, as you can see, our camo index is really good even when we're standing up. Just take those two guys out. Again, there's a way faster way of doing this, but there's no real reason to rush. I would also take out this guy here. And don't worry about ammo. We're going to have plenty of places to pick up ammo in just a second in the next map. Take him out. Walk forward a little bit. Then you're going to take this guy out here. Boom. And again, if you're running kind of low on stamina as I am here, I'm almost halfway. Make sure you throw on the animal's camouflage because that's going to stabilize your, your aim. Once you've taken all those guys out, though, continue forward here. Now, this next map, there's a little trick. As soon as you load in, as soon as you snake, see snake load in, hold square. That's going to make it so you can lock onto this next guy that you have to shoot immediately, as you can see there. Boom. And then you're going to equip the box just to go up these hills. There's, as I promised, there's more Mark 22 ammo, more than we even need at the moment. Now, once you get to this little block here... Just unequip your box. This guy's not going to see you for whatever reason. I don't know what it is, but what you have to be careful for here is once you get to this area here, there's going to be a guard up here. So stand on your tiptoes. Again, holding R1 and then L2 and R2 at the same time to take him out. And that's pretty much everybody that you have to worry about in this first section here. So again, just equip your box. Traverse through this area here. Careful not to fall off the edge. There's going to be one more guard up here. Just e leave your box equipped. We're going to do that same technique where we run into them with the box and then CQC them. Like that. Equip your box again. And we're going to have a few more guards to take out here. I would stop around here just so this guy doesn't see you. Maybe even crouch to ensure that he doesn't see you. Tranquilize him. You're going to have another guard right next to him here. Tranquilize him. And you're going to have one more guard. I would throw on the box here just to get to him sooner. You're going to have one more guard around this corner here. What I like to do is go up this ramp and get the angle here and just take him out there. Now, be careful. My suppressor just ran out, as you can see. But I have one more, so I just threw it on. And then make your way in here. Now, I like to save in this area. You don't need to. But I'm going to take a second here to save. There's a lot that can go wrong here. So I would advise that you do save here. Once you're done saving, the first thing we're going to do is make sure our Mark 22 is equipped. And then we're going to shoot this guy up here first. There's no rush. Just make sure you take him out first and then this guy. Then we're going to drop down in this trench here. And we're going to take out this guy. Boom. Equip your box just to make this a little faster. Then you're going to head up this way. And up this. Up this using the action button. And then I would roll into this trench here. Now be very careful. There's going to be a guard that's going to appear in just a second. I would do the little lean technique. Hold R1 and then hold L2 while you're holding R1. And then be careful. We're going to take this last guy out. The way I did that was I just climbed up here. And then I just aimed this way, took him out. Once you've done that, you can climb up and then roll across this. And then roll into this trench. And then we're going to equip our box and we're going to make our way into where we meet Eva here. Do you After you regain control of Snake, we're just going to head back in. Now in this next little area, there are going to be noodles on the ground. Make sure you pick those up. We're going to use those toward the end of the game. And then we're just going to exit out this door. Once you're here, you want to line yourself up with this here, this corner here. And you're going to use that to jump up on this. And the reason we want to do that is because it avoids that flamethrower guy down there. And then we're just going to roll down here. And this is the door that we need to go to. So if you don't make that jump, I would reload and try again or or just 
run up and try it again because otherwise it just it's kind of messy you have to take out that flamethrower guard and there's just a high chance for an alert there either way make your way down those stairs there's some extra ammo here if you need it one very important thing if you haven't done so already is to equip the Mosin. That's super important. You can unequip these smoke grenades now. So if you need room, just unequip these smoke grenades and replace it with the Mosin. That's going to be very important. That's the main weapon that we're going to use for the Fury. Now, Fury, there's only one real way to take him on. And a lot of it is RNG-based. One thing you can do if you're New Game Plus is equip the Fire Camo. That's going to help a little bit. Now, I highly recommend saving during this boss fight. This guy is rng the most RNG boss fight in the game. So take the time to save. And then what you also want to do after you save is you want to make sure that if you haven't done so already, you equip the Mosin. Right? So let's just check. We have the Mosin equipped. And also what you can do if you're New Game Plus to help out a little bit to mitigate a lot of the damage that he does is either wear the sneaking suit or the fire suit. Now, I like wearing the fire suit because it makes you immune to fire. You won't catch on fire, meaning you don't have to equip your box to extinguish the flames. If you're not New Game Plus and you don't have this camouflage, if he hits you with one of his fire attacks and snake lights on fire, just equip, equip your cardboard box and it'll extinguish it immediately. Either way, what we're going to listen for here is audio cues on to which side he's going to land on. Get your Mosin ready. He's going to land to the left, as you can hear. So we're going to shoot him twice. I didn't get to my follow-up shot. Be careful. Now he's right here, so be very careful. Try to shoot him if you can. This fight is going to be very different. For all of us, like it's always different, so you can't really go off of what I'm doing. You just kind of have to play it by ear here. So he's behind me. I'm gonna try to sneak another shot off on him. Another few shots. Once again, if he lights you up with a fire, just extinguish it with your box or just wear your fire's camo. And we ended up getting them there, first try. That's a tough boss fight, but if you take him out non-lethally, which you need to for Foxhound, his fire camo is going to be located here. So congratulations on taking out the most annoying boss in the entire game. There's some extra Mark 22 ammo here, as well as another Mark 22 suppressor, which we definitely need. Once you've gotten all that ready to go, what you can do is switch your camouflage now. I'm going to switch to our trusty animals camouflage because my stamina is looking very low. And from there, we can take these stairs up. I'm going to save immediately once we resurface into Grozniagrad, just because I absolutely hate the Fury boss fight. So I'm going to take the time to save here. And once you've saved, we're going to have one guy to take out here, I believe. Just roll up these stairs. You're going to head straight across these shipping containers, and the guy that we're going to take out is... Over there. Now be careful since we have not the best camouflage for... Make sure your Mark 22 is equipped. I almost blew this guy's head off. We don't have the best camo for Grozniagrad, which is like a snowy area. But as long as we stay far enough away, this guy won't see us. And then from here, we're just going to go through this red door to the next section of Grozniagrad. Immediately once you load in, you're going to go right... Or sorry, straight ahead if you're using this camera. There's going to be one guy here, so walk up against this wall so he doesn't hear your footsteps. Tranquilize him. And then tranquilize this one. And then you're going to have another guy here. And another one to your right that you don't really need to take out, but just to be safe, let's take him out. Now, once you're here, I'm going to show you the fancy way of doing this first. This requires strict timing, so don't worry if you can't do this. I'll show you a backup method. First thing you want to do is unequip the suppressor on your lethal handgun. Fire one round off, and then immediately go to the options menu. You want to unequip your face paint, and you want to equip the scientist outfit. Right? Then you want to make sure that you have in your backpack the cigar gas spray equipped. Once you've done all those things and confirmed all those things... You're going to equip your SIG gas spray and you're going to head toward these stairs here. Now, don't roll until you get to this staircase and then this one. As soon as Rykov's done talking into that uh, speaker or whatever it is, pick him up by unequipping your SIG gas spray and then drag him straight back. You're going to hit a wall, right? Once you hit this wall, you're going to go left. Now, you're going to be very careful because there's going to be backup that's going to come through in just a second. So one, two, once both of them have gone through, you're free to go. 
keep dragging him back to the locker room, which is where we need to go. And again, this is very difficult to do. So I'm going to show you a different method. But once you're here, you're done and ready to continue. Now, the other way you can do this is immediately upon entering the weapons lab. You want to equip your Mark 22, make sure it is suppressed. And then Rykov is going to be to your left on the furthest bridge. So if you watch the left over here, you're going to see him crossing this bridge here. You want to shoot him once in the leg to grab his attention. The whole thing we're doing here is making sure he doesn't wander off too far away. Once you shoot him once in the leg, you want to unequip your face paint and then equip your scientist outfit. We're going to walk forward just a little bit enough to where he notices us about here where he says, hey, and then we're just going to wait here. Equip your Sig gas ray. You're going to wait until he wanders this way. You can use your Sig gas ray on this guy to be super safe. Then once you get to the staircase, make sure you do roll up both sets of stairs here and then equip your box. You're going to use this to run into Rykov and then use the Sig gas ray on him. Once he's out, all we're going to do here is drag him to that same spot that we dragged him in the last method to trigger the next cutscene. And if you do this quick enough, no one should interrupt you here. And once you're here, that is it. You're good to go. Once you're here, all you have to do is go to your camouflage face, put on the mask, and then put your uniform on and put on the officer uniform. And once you have those two things ready to go, you can actually walk through the store. And there's nothing we really have to worry about here. We are also in disguise right now, so it's kind of hard to cause an alert. Now, having said that, the next door that we go through, there's going to be two two guards that are going to be awaiting your arrival. And if you do anything that's out of the ordinary for Rykov, they're going to catch you. So do not roll here. Do not seek you see. Do not do anything. Just walk forward toward them and trigger the cutscene. Now, I wouldn't save here. I, I do not save when it prompts you to. And there's actually a trick here for the torture room if you want to maintain full health and your stamina meter where it is now. We're going to hold one of the shoulder buttons or both. I like to hold both just in case, but it is confirmed that you can hold only one, either L2 or R2 or the equivalent of that on your controller. What that does, if you hold it during a certain portion of this, is actually kind of freezes the game and makes it so you don't lose any health. So I'll let you know when to do it. During all this, you don't need to be holding it at all. Actually, you don't want to or else it'll freeze the game. Now, Colonel Volgan's going to kind of divert his attention over to you. And he's going to say a specific line. And after that line is when you want to hold either L2 or R2 or both. But first, let's take a look at your body, shall we? What a beautiful body you have. Like a newborn baby. So after this line here, after he says, let's get started, start holding on to L2 or R2 here. And as you can see, if you did it right, my health is not moving at all right now. And during this portion of the game, he beats you so hard that your health is dropping. So as long as you hold on to L2, R2, or both this entire time while this is going on, your health will not go down. And that helps tremendously with the damage taken stat. That's part of getting Foxhound rank. I mean, we shouldn't be taking too much damage in this run anyway, since it's a full Even stealth run, but this limits. also helps just a little bit more. I am a patient man. So after this, you're going to spawn into your jail cell, and this is the next portion that we want to save in. Make sure you absolutely 100% save here. Ready. And okay. once you've saved, there's going to be a couple of ways to do this to get out of this jail cell. Whichever way you choose to do it, pick up the fork first, and then you're going to wait for Johnny to throw your food at you 
pick that up as well. Once you've done those two things, you can go to the cure menu and make sure you use the fork to dig out both of these things here. And then what I like to do is spin snake around 10 times. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Let's do two more for good measure. That's going to cause him to throw up. Now make sure you pick this up and equip your single action army. Johnny's going to open the door because he feels bad for you. And then you're going to seek you see punch him. One, two, one, two. Equip your single action army and then beat him. And that's going to knock him out, as you can see. Now, when he's knocked out, you absolutely need to do this step. You need to pick up these smoke grenades by shaking his body. That is massive. If you do not have those smoke grenades, this next portion of the game is going to be nearly impossible. Now, this next portion is going to be pretty difficult, but I promise that this is the best way to do it without wasting a crazy amount of time. What you want to do is immediately throw this vampire bat meat, the one that Johnny threw at you, straight ahead. And then... Right as that's in the air, once again, hold R2 to equip a smoke grenade. And we're going to do our maneuver that we did during the end, where we cook a grenade and use it to walk silently behind an enemy. So cook it and then run immediately to your right behind this enemy. Now you have to hit this guy at a sharp angle, right? Once you're here, you can crouch or dive just so you're not seen. And then crawl through this vent. And you have to do that dive or crawl or else you get caught there. Now this next portion is very easy. It's not going to be anywhere near as hard as what we just did. You just want to run up against this wall. People are going to see you, but they're not going to cause an alert. If you're scared, just roll here. And then go into this next map here. Now, I highly recommend that you save here as well. This is probably my least favorite part of the entire game. So I like to dedicate one save, save to this. Hold on a sec. Now, once you save, you're immediately going to go the long way around all of this. So you're going to go over this way. You're going to tuck yourself in all the way back here up against this back wall. You're going to roll over this, and then you're going to loop back around. And now we're going to get close enough to where these guys can see us, are alerted of our presence, but we don't cause an alert. So there we go. We got the first guy. Scoop back a little bit. Wait till the second guy turns around and sees you. Once they both see you and start heading toward you, you're just going to go all the way here up against this left fence or gate, right? Let them pass you. You've got plenty of time to do this. Then you're going to go back and loop in this way. Once you get to this tank. And now we're just going to keep on iron our friend over there in the distance. Once he turns away now. Once he's looking the other way. We can get past him. And then we're going to use this wall here. We're going to walk up just a little bit. So we make sure we don't miss our grenade throw. We're going to miss. We're going to throw a grenade right in front of that guy. Right at the dog here. And then right by these boxes over there. So we're going to use all of our smoke grenades that we got from Johnny. And that's going to make it so we have a nice smoke screen here. We're going to dive. Then we're going to stand up, and we're going to dive again. And if you did it right, you should not get seen here. Now, that part might take you a couple tries. It is a pain in the ass. Trust me, I know. But that is the best way, the most consistent way, and the easiest way that I've found to do that. Once you're here, you're just going to skip this codec call. And then what I like to do, this is kind of not really necessary, but I like to equip the cigar. And then also just jump down and take the damage here. That's going to make it so the Sorrow fight is a little bit shorter. Now here you just want to follow my route through this sewer area. And the reason why we're intentionally taking damage is because the Sorrow fight, obviously we're going to drown ourselves or we're going to use a grenade or the RPG if you picked it up. Any of those things to quickly end the fight. There is sort of a disclaimer there though. And that is you don't really need to hurry up and try to end the Sorrow fight as quickly as possible. Because it has been confirmed many times now that the time that you kind of spend during that sorrow fight does not count toward your end game time. So you could spend an hour at the Sorrows River. I don't know why you would. But you could technically spend an hour in the Sorrows River. And all that time will not be added onto your total game time at the end of the game. So just keep that in mind. This is more so to make the guide go quicker. And to get you guys going into the next portion of the game, if that makes sense. Now, once you're in the Sorrows River, once again, what I like to do is very easy. Just go in the water and just chill here. Your stamina is going to drain very quickly. And then once your stamina is all the way depleted, your health will deplete. Once it's all the way depleted, you can use your revival pill. And that is essentially the Sorrow boss fight.
skip these cutscenes, this codec call, and then our objective now is to meet up with Eva. Now keep in mind, it's very important that you did the steps back in the jail cell correctly. If you did not use the fork to remove the tra transmitting device, the transmitter device that Ocelot placed on us, you will have to deal with some Ocelot unit members here, which is not ideal at all. Either way, make your way this way, up this path. And Eva is going to be waiting for us behind the waterfall. As you can hear, Snake is very hungry. But we don't need to worry about eating because Eva is going to restore our health meter here. I would not save here. I'm going to show you guys. We're going to save shortly, but we're not going to save there. Once you're here, just continue moving forward. As you can see, we have full health, full stamina. We're looking good. We're healthy. And we're going to need all that. You don't really need to pick up that suppressor. But there is going to be some ammo here. For our trusty Mark 22. And then this is very important. Do not forget to do this. You want to absolutely pick up this box here. This is going to make it so we can skip a large portion of the game. Then make your way in here. And pick that ammo up if you need it. Now here's where I would change your stuff around. So right now our item and weapon menu is all messed up because we didn't we got stripped of all of our stuff. So I would unequip and equip everything that we need and don't need. So we do not need the fork anymore and we do not need the single action army. We are going to need the Mark 22. I like to have this weapon equipped just in case. We'll probably use the Patriot. We're going to use the SVD and the Mosin. And then I like to have stun grenades equipped. You can unequip smoke grenades and you can equip the C3. That's going to be part of our main mission coming up. As far as items go, we don't really need anything except for cardboard box A, or sorry, B, which is the one we just picked up, I believe. One of these ones is the one we just picked up. Equip both. I'll show you which one we need in just a second. And once you have all your stuff ready to go, you can even change around your camouflage. I'm going to go, I'm just going to keep it how it is, but you, you can change your camouflage here if you need to. And we're just going to go up this staircase here and immediately as soon as we spawn into the next area we're going to save i'm going to show you guys a little trick after we save that you can try to use so save here immediately so the best way to do this trick is first of all make sure you have your mark 22 equipped and suppressed next you want to equip box b now make sure it's box b it's very important that it is box b once you have that equipped what we're going to do is we're going to very quickly go to that tank behind snake and we're going to brush up against his treads. That's going to cause one of the guards to see us and say, a box. We're going to wait for him to walk by. And then we're going to shoot at his friend behind him with the tranquilizer. And that's going to cause a weird interaction to happen. Where if we keep the box equipped during this portion, it's going to be like we're invisible. So as you can see here in just a second, equip your box. You're going to brush up against the treads here. Wait for him to pass by. Tranquilize his friend. And then we're going to equip the box. And we're just going to walk by these guys as if we're invisible. Now, this is very important. Make sure you have the box equipped until you get around to this area here. Now you can unequip it. But I promise there's no cheating involved. There's nothing like that at play there. It's literally just a weird interaction. But because of that, we get to get to this truck way faster, equip our box, and it's going to take us right where we need to go for the next objective. Now, if you want to be super safe here, which I recommend that you are safe, we can take the extra time to actually go back up these stairs and through this door. And we're actually going to pick up the mechanic outfit to kind of blend in in this next area. Now, you don't really have to do this, but we have the extra time, so why not? Now, it's going to be located in this locker here that I already have open. So the second from the left of this last row here. And once you have it, you can just throw it on. Now, make sure that you have the C3 equipped before you do this. And if you've confirmed, the next thing you could do to help out a little bit is actually equip the handkerchief that we got earlier on in the game. So you have some form of a weapon to use. But either way, make sure you have no face paint. And then throw on the uniform, the maintenance uniform. And then you can also throw on your handkerchief. Now, keep in mind, you cannot CQC and you cannot use your normal weapons outside of the handkerchief during this part. 
And we're going to treat this the same way as we treated the lab portions of the game. Where whenever there's one of the actual workers near us, we can equip our box. And that's going to stop them from catching us. Once you get to the first one here, make sure to place the C3. Then I like to equip my box here. And we're going to wait for this guy to patrol up a little bit. Then we're going to walk up to him with our box. Now we're going to walk toward this one here. And we're going to do the same thing. Equip the C3. Place it. And once you've done that, we can equip our handkerchief again. And then we're going to walk up to this guy here. And we're going to take him out. There's going to be another guy over here. We can do the same thing to him. Just go about our day and then surprise him with the handkerchief. And then we can place the next C3 down here. And then be careful because there is one more guy as you can see up there. But if you do this quick enough, you can just place the C3 before he even knows what's going on. Now be careful because immediately after this is going to be the Colonel Volgan fight. And you're not going to be able to do anything until you take off this uniform. You can't CQC or use any of your weapons. So what I would do is skip these codec calls and cutscenes. Do not save here. I would not recommend that you save here. The last... And then what you want to do is, first of all, unequip this uniform, as I said. If you are on New Game Plus, this is an awesome opportunity to wear your sneaking suit here. Your face, camo doesn't really matter. And then make sure that you have these weapons equipped. You can unequip your handkerchief now. It served us well. You can also unequip the C3. We don't need it anymore. So you want your Mark 22, your handgun, your Mose and your SVD, and then if you're on New Game Plus, make sure you have your Patriot as well. I'm going to show you guys a few different methods to take out Colonel Volgan here, but do not forget to save after you've done all this. So make sure after you've changed your camouflage and everything that you do save here. Snake, you now for Volgan, if you have the Patriot, this is for New Game Plus. This is how you're going to tackle him. Since he has plot armor here, you can actually defeat him lethally, and it won't count toward your stats in the end game screen, in the score screen. So the quickest way to take him out if you're new game plus is just to walk over to him, grab him with CQC, then you're going to push him forward with CQC using the circle and left analog stick. And when he's getting up, shoot him once. And then as he's getting up, just spam him with shots over and over again. Once he gets up, just line up behind him, and you can headshot him back here and shoot him a bunch of times. And you're going to repeat those steps over and over again. You're going to get behind him. And you're going to shoot him over and over with the Patriot. They can come out a little bit. Keep shooting him. And once you get him below half health, he's going to go into phase two. As you can see. Now phase two is going to start with him doing his bullet attack. It's like a 360 degree attack. Let him do that. Wait a second and then spam your Patriot into him. When he hunches over like that, stop shooting, and then keep shooting. So just make him do that over and over again. Hunch over, shoot, hunch over, shoot, hunch over, shoot, hunch over, shoot, hunch over, shoot. Before long, you'll take him out super fast, super easy. You have infinite ammo, so you can just keep doing that over and over again. Now, if you do not have access to the Patriot because you're playing on a new game save file that you haven't played through once... What you can do is actually take the extra time to take Volgan out non-lethally. I highly advise you do this because then you get to earn the Cold War camouflage, which completely trivializes the whole EVA motorcycle escape sequence. Since enemies cannot shoot at you when you're wearing this camouflage and you're facing them, you can kind of chill out and just not do much of anything during that portion. But either way, if you want to take him out non-lethally to earn this camouflage, this is the best way to do it. We're going to start the same way. We're going to run up to him, CQC grab him, then push him with CQC, and then we're going to take out our Mosin and fire a couple shots off at him. Once he turns around, we're going to go behind him, fire a couple more shots. And then now put your gun away, and you're just going to dodge his moves. You're going to CQC slam him, and then you're going to roll over his body to do some extra non-lethal damage to him. So again, just dodge his mechanics, just dodge his CQC. Kind of bait him to punch you. You can also, if you want to speed this up a little bit, get behind him and shoot him with your Trank Gun. You can get some shots off, but the most reliable way is just to CQC slam him and then throw him to the ground. 
Now be careful here. He's going to shoot at you. So make sure you dodge the bullets. And then get behind him and CQC slam him and roll him. Once you get into phase two, you're going to do the same thing as in the first method. You're going to roll on the ground to avoid his massive attack here. Then get up immediately. Now you want to wait till his electricity goes away from his body and then you grab him. And the best advice I can give you here is stay near him so he doesn't use any of his crazy attacks. If you stay near Volgan during this phase, he only uses his CQC attacks, which can be deadly, but they're way easier to dodge than his other attacks, as you can see. So just roll, and once you roll, kind of come back to him. And just bait him to attack you, roll over him, come back, bait him out a little bit. There we go. Roll over him. And then we're going to bait him, I think, one more time. But you can throw him immediately when he does that, just so you know. Uh, one more time, it seems like. Bait his attack. Let's be patient. There we go. There's our opening. And then if you're playing on a new game, save file, his, he should drop his Cold War camo there. Make sure you pick that up. And now we're going to immediately switch to that camouflage. And I'm going to show you guys, it's crazy how much this trivializes. This one camouflage trivializes this entire fight. The other thing you want to do is equip your RPG. And then you can either use the Mark 22. I like to use the Mosin here to stun the enemies. But you'll see, as soon as the enemies start popping out, the actual guards, they're not going to be able to do much of anything because of our Cold War camouflage. They're going to be stuck there, not being able to shoot us. So I won't do anything, so you can see. See, they can't shoot at us because we have the Cold War camo on. So it's very easy to just pick them off one by one. The guy in the tower here you can take out if you want. But I do think it's it's worth it during the Vulcan fight to take the extra time to take him out non-lethally. It's also not very hard to do, as you saw in the, the guide there. And this is when I like to just chill out before the harder sections of the game. You kind of don't have to worry now that you have this camouflage since they won't shoot at you as long as you're facing them. Now keep in mind, if you're facing away from them, they will shoot you like normal. So I have my if I have my back turned to them, they're going to shoot me here. As you can see, there's a guy behind me, and he's shooting me no problem. But it still minimizes the, the amount of damage that you take, obviously, by a lot. Once you get to this section, take these guys as quickly... Take these guys out as quickly as you can, I should say. And if you want to, you don't have to do this, but you can get a little bit of damage on the Shagohod here during this portion of the game. If you fire at its, like, head portion, you don't really have to do this. I remember during the HD collection, this part used to lag like crazy. But luckily, they fixed it a little bit in the Master Collection. It's not as bad by any means. Now be careful. Do not stop shooting when the tank gets split to you or else you'll hurt yourself and Eva. Same thing when the Shagohot's too close. You don't want to fire at it because it will do damage to you. The splash damage from the RPG. So as you can see, I'm taking a little bit of damage from the Shagohot here. And we're going to have another opportunity in just a bit to do that some more. So like I said, you don't have to use the Mosin if you're more comfortable using the Mark 22. The Trank Pistol, you can use that during this portion. But I'm telling you, that Cold War camouflage is... It makes a massive difference here with how hard this is. I mean, this portion was never the hardest, but... It just makes it so much easier. So these guys can't even really shoot at us while we're facing them. Which allows us then to take them all out. Now you're gonna have a bunch of them charging at you here. Not a huge deal. Use, like I said, use whatever gun is comfortable to you. Any non-lethal gun works. I usually use the Mosin, but I'm just messing around using the Mark 22 this time. Seeing how that works. Because I do think most people will be comfortable with it. Now, you want to make sure that you're constantly facing this guy or you take him out. Because he will shoot the RPG at you if you do not have the Cold War camo on. And you are not facing him. So just be aware of that. I'm going to switch to my Mosin here. It feels weird not using it for this portion. So 
throw as mentioned. Just make sure that you're always facing these enemies and you don't even really have to take them out here. You can just do this the whole time. Just literally face them and they can't do anything to you. makes it so you have way more health going into the boss fight, going into both Shagohod fights, so definitely worth getting that Cold War camo. Now, during this portion, make sure that the Shagohod or you take out the remaining guards, and then you can start doing some damage to the Shagohod by doing the tactical reload with RPG equipped. Let him get closer to you and then start firing at him again. Don't let him get too close. Once you're at the rail bridge, I would recommend taking out three out of the four T4 charges that you need to take out. So there's one, two. You're going to get the swinging one here. Three. And then from here, just chill out until the Shagohod gets here. Eva will say it's here, and then you can shoot. Once she says that, shoot the last charge. And we're going to start the first Shagohot fight. So once you're here, make sure to save. And once you've saved, this fight is very simple. All you want to do is equip your RPG. Shoot at one of the treads here as soon as the Shagohot starts moving. So now. And that's going to stop the tread. It's going to stop the Shagohot from moving. And then you want to aim. If this is its head, if this is the front of its head, you want to aim to the back of its head. Does that make sense? So there. You can get some free shots off on it. You don't always have to shoot the tread. If you're already facing it, you can just get some shots off on it. But for the most part, you want to shoot tr the tread and then just shoot the back of the Shagohod's head. You can get an extra shot off here. Just keep spamming your RPG. And you'll do some extra damage to it. Shot off here, not to shoot the tread, no big deal. That's basically the whole fight, just keep doing that, and the Shagohod will eventually go down. Make sure to capitalize if you're like this, you can get some extra shots off on it. And once phase two starts, it's going to be more of the same thing. You want to shoot the tread, but this time you then want to get your Mosin out, your non-lethal sniper rifle. And then you want to shoot at Volgan, his head. Boom. Then wait for the Shagohot to become active again, and then shoot the tread again. Did a little too early there. Shoot at Volgan. Get ready to shoot the tread again. Now, if he shoots missiles up in the air, you want to equip your SVD and just no scope him out of the air. And then get ready to shoot the treads again. 
Same thing here. Mows into the head. Oh, I missed there, so be careful. He might shoot at you. Mows into the head, and then we're quickly going to switch to the SVD. So shoot these out of the air. When he shoots these, this uh, barrage of, I guess, rounds at you, just dodge it by unequipping your weapon and just go clockwise or counterclockwise. Once he stops, you can equip your RPG for the final time, and then make sure you shoot him in the head for the last time here. Guess that didn't count for whatever reason. Just do it one more time, and then take him out. Neither of the Shagohod fights are too difficult at all. Here I like to equip my Mosin. You can equip your Mark 22. You don't really have to shoot at these guys, but it gives you something to do. Otherwise, it's very boring since you have the Cold War camo. Not really much of anything to do. For the sake of the video, I will be speeding up this portion just a bit until there's more action. Because right now, it's just more of this. Shoot at them, rinse, repeat, all that fun stuff. So I'll talk to you guys in just a bit. Once you're in this next map here, there's going to be these guys on these hovercraft things. More of the same thing. You can just shoot them with your Mosin or the Mark 22, whatever you prefer. Just be careful if you shoot them too close to a tree and they blow up next to you. They will do damage to you. And also, they try to hit you at an angle so they can shoot at you despite you wearing your Cold War camouflage. Just try to take out the ones to the sides as quickly as you can when they respawn. Now eventually, Eva will tell you that there's a log up ahead. This is the same in every difficulty. You just have to get your RPG out and shoot the log that's coming up on us here. No rush, really, to do it. Keep in mind, while you do that, these guys will have an open shot to you, but, I mean, we're taking, like, no damage here, so not a huge deal. More of the same thing here. So, again, for the sake of the video, I'm going to speed this up. Just make sure you're facing these guys so they can't shoot at you while you systematically take them out. And after this jump is going to be second to last place that we're going to save. It's going to be the beginning of the EVA Escort. Uh, Eva's going to be hurt. We need to heal her up a little bit. So we'll go to Cure, then Eva. You're going to do the normal thing that you do for a cut. And once she's good to go, make sure you come over here and you pick up these stun grenades. That's going to be very important. After that, you can just take off. You don't really need to save here just yet. Just make sure that you follow this way that I'm going here. Try to get Eva out of there because there are guards that appear out of nowhere. But you don't need Eva to follow you for this section. You can just take off on your own. And once you're down here... You'll be in the next map. Now, here's where we're going to save. Just make sure before you save, you change your camouflage around. So, camouflage. I would pick something that's good for the jungle. Flectarn's really good. If you have moss camo, that's also really good. But anything like that, you could change your face to woodland. Most important thing here, though, is to stay hidden and to keep Eva with you this whole time. So just follow this route that I'm going here. You want to press the action button to make Eva come over to you, to your current position.
And as long as you're going a similar pace as me, you should be fine. Again, make sure that you saved back there after we changed our camouflage. I know I did all that pretty quickly, but just make sure you save there. Keep bringing her down this way. You don't want to get too far ahead of her or else she like loses sight of you and then she kind of just sits around. Once you've reached like this muddy area, that's your cue to come over to the right. You're going to progress to the next map now. Now get ready for some shooting here. So make sure you have your Mark 22 equipped and it's suppressed. You should have plenty of suppression left on your suppressors. Once you drop down here, there's immediately going to be guards in front of you. So you want to take that guard out first. Again, with your Mark 22, make sure it's suppressed. He's going to be right here. He's really hard to see, but he's right in front of you. You then want to go left and take this guy out. Okay, if you missed the first time. Then there's going to be two guys back to back. You want to shoot these guys in like their chest area. Or if you can get them to do that, get them to do that. Just make sure you shoot him in the chest. And then one more down here. And that's going to be most of the guys that we need to take out. Eva's going to be asking for food. You can actually give her some of those noodles that we got earlier to speed this up a little bit. So get close to her. Go to food. Instant noodles. And then feed it to Eva. Do not eat them yourself. Give them to Eva. That's going to fill her for stamina. Some more. And she won't complain as much. And she'll also be faster. But now all we have to do is make our way over to the last little area here before we fight the boss. So just continue forward, make sure you turn around, make sure that Eva is with you. You're going to go up here, so there's going to be a branching path. Make sure you stay to the left or directly ahead from the way we came. Now we're going to do a little trick here to completely eliminate one of the guards. We don't have to interact with him at all after we do this trick. But once you reach pretty much the top here and you're with Eva, wait for her to get to you. And then we're going to kick this thing down here, this herb. And that's going to make a noise. And it's there's a guy directly below us here. The guy directly below us here, as you can see. This is going to distract him if we kick this. So he'll hear that and then now as soon as he hears that I hear something. and he says that we can take out his friends here so one here boom there's gonna be one hidden behind this tree so you're gonna have to do that little lean r1 and then hold r2 while you're aiming wait for him to reset once he's reset you can take him out try not to miss like i did there just wait for him to reset and then you can shoot at him again and then there's gonna be one guy in the grass here Make him pop up so you can get the headshot off on him. And then drop down. Make sure you call Eva down. Because that guy that we distracted with the herb is going to be making his way around over there. Guy's still up, so let's take him out. Fine, if our suppressor's worn, we're not going to really use it anymore. Now you just want to stay in this grassy area and you shouldn't get caught by anybody. We're good to go now. And now before you start this boss fight, if you're playing New Game Plus, this is a perfect opportunity to switch to your sneaking camouflage to minimize the damage that the boss is going to do to you. And then make sure that you have the Mosin and stun grenades with you for the technique that, that we're going to use on the boss. But once you've assured yourself that you have both of those things, continue to escort Eva over to this ledge here. And this is going to trigger the next portion of the game or the last portion of the game, which is the boss fight. It was November. Let's now, the way we're going to fight the boss, as soon as Snake grunts, you're going to counter CQC by pressing the CQC button or circle. Then when you have her in this position, you're going to switch to your Mosin and you're going to shoot her twice. doesn't matter where. If you can, go for the headshots if you're confident. If not, just shoot the body like I'm going to show you here. So you equip the Mosin. You're going to shoot once, shoot twice, and then you're going to CQC slam her down. Excellent. Equip stun grenades. You're going to look straight up in the air. Wait a second, then throw a stun grenade. She's going to get up and get blinded by that stun. Then you're going to do the same thing we just did. Mosin, shot, shot, CQC. 
Then same thing. Stun grenade. Look all the way up in the air. Wait a second. Throw the grenade. She's going to get hit. Same thing again. Mosin. Mosin. CQC. And then we're going to do our last round of stun grenades. Up in the air. Wait a second. Throw it. She might not get hit that time. She might counter CQC you, so be ready for it. And then you're just going to do the same thing. Mosin. Mosin. And then you can actually get an extra shot in after you slam her. Your skills have improved. You can shoot her one more time. I would hide after that. And then let her CQC you. You hear Snake grunt. That's when you counter CQC. You're going to Mosin Mosin. Slam on the ground. And that's the fight. So that might look very difficult to do. If you can't do the whole stun grenade loop and all that, then you can just make it easy by doing Mosin Mosin slam and then rolling on her and then hiding and repeating that process, letting her find you, attack you. And then as soon as you hear snake grunt, that's the most important part. As soon as you hear snake grunt, that's when you want to press circle or the equivalent of circle on your controller to counter CQC her. If you can get that down, even if you can't get everything else down, like the Mosin shots or the stun grenades up in the air or any of that, if you can get that CQC counter down, that's already like 70% of the fight. But either way, make sure you save at the beginning of that boss fight. That is very important, and it's something I forgot to mention. We're going to pretty much save at every single boss fight during this guide, if you haven't noticed yet. And it might take a couple tries, but once you get her down, that's GG. That's the whole game. So congratulations. So once you're prompted, just press the square button to fire the final shot into the boss. And then we're going to get this little portion with Ocelot. Make sure you pick the left gun, the left box on the ground there. So you can just spam this and get the shot off as soon as possible. Since all of this counts toward your end game time, you just want to do this as quickly as possible. I wouldn't really save here when the game asks you to. Just so you don't go over your 25 saves. Don't worry, you're going to be able to save your completed save file after the credits and the score screen. And speaking of credits, we have to sit through them now. So for the sake of the video, I'm going to skip them. We're going to end up at the score screen together. And there you have it. Foxhound rank. Now, please let me know if you enjoyed this guide, if you used it at all, even if it was just for a couple of the bosses or a couple of the harder portions in the game. Please let me know. Leave a comment or a like below. It really does help me out a lot, and I really do enjoy reading those comments about you guys getting your Foxhound ranks as well. Whether you use this guide or you just watch it to help support the channel, thank you so much. I really do appreciate it. As always, I will see you guys in the next one.